Hello, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over how to download data from the internet and compute or estimate um, systematic risk, which is firm beta. So to do this, remember, this is the Kepler as a pricing model. Um, to do this, we will need to get the return for a stock, um, the risk-free return, and also the mark, and then compute the market pre risk premium. Uh, to compute the market risk premium, we need the market return um, and minus the risk-free rate. So as we said, we need to find proxy for this risk-free return and the market return. We're going to use UST view as a proxy for risk-free return and the S&P 500 index as a proxy for the market return. With a caveat, as you know, websites change and URL uh, changes. Um, so be mindful that when you try this, it may have changed. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out to me. So for the three months treasury bill return, the uh, easiest way to access the monthly data is um, provided by the St. Louis uh, Federal Reserve. Um, this is their website. Um, it has T bill three months series. So this will take you directly there. Now, if they have changed the location, um, you can probably search for uh, St. Louis Fed three months TBO return, and that will find that will most likely uh, help you get to the correct address. Uh, once again, you want to be able to use this information uh, way past this course. So just uh, recognize that is from the St. Louis Fed. So even if they move this direct um, this um, final two places, you can still search for it there. For the S&P 500 index, um, you can get in many different places. Uh, the one I'm going to demonstrate today is from financeyahoo.com. Uh, the ticker symbol, this is a ticker symbol that is used for the index in, in Yahoo is um, a correct sign. The correct sign indicates that this is an index. Uh, GSPC is the symbol for the S&P 500 index. Let's first take a look at the TBU. Here's the default uh, for the TBU. Obviously, it has, uh, so take a look at this. So it starts um, the latest, um, depending on when you upset, um, uh, um, access this, this website, it will obviously be slightly different. The frequency is monthly. And you can choose, um, so right now the default is uh, from the beginning of the index, which is all the way back to 1934. Um, you can select five year, that's usually a good enough um, interval for estimation. And you'll notice that um, the TBO is actually not as risk-free as we would like. Uh, notice that there is a huge drop in TBO in, um, in uh, March of 2020. And for all of us, remember, this is the beginning of COVID. So this is a very unusual time period. Um, if you're doing this for a long-term analysis, a lot of times people may try to avoid um, the two years of COVID. So to avoid COVID, we're going to start with 2015. Um, January through 2019, December. So that'll give us five years worth of data. And we can download this. And you have um, different options. Um, I'm going to download as a CSV file just to um, show you how you can do that. And you can open the file, so open up Excel, and then you can open the file um, just like you normally would. And by default, so you need to change, you need to check your computer. By default, um, most computer would put that in your download folder. So, and. Because it's a CSV file and not an Excel file, you may not, you will not automatically show up. So if you click on the folder, that will show um, all the files besides the Excel file. So you can change 
it to all files. So change from all Excel file to all file, or you can even change it to CSV file. So if you go to all file and then you see the file that you just downloaded. So this is the three month TBU and you notice that it goes from um, 2015 January all the way down to um, December 2019. So that's five years worth of data. Uh, if you highlight it, that's 60 observations. So that's five years worth of data. We're going to try to download some stock prices. Uh, I'm going to use financeyahoo.com. Um, there are other sources as well. You're welcome to use um, any of those. Um, and of course, you can use um, other stock as well. But you are welcome to follow along just to make sure that you get exactly the same result the first time. Uh, the company I'm going to use is Oracle. So if you don't know the symbol, you can just type the name of the company to search for the symbol. And if you scroll down, you will see all kinds of information about the company. So uh, this is a free website and the information is actually quite good. Um, here is a summary. You can look at the financial data. So this include income statement, um, balance sheet, cash flow statement. You can look at the annual statements. You can look at the quarterly statement. You can also um, download them. I guess you have to subscribe to Yahoo to do that. Um, and then you can also choose historical data. Historical data is historical prices. Uh, you can choose the time period and you can also choose uh, the frequency. We're going to use monthly. In addition to prices, you can also choose dividends, stock split, capital gain. We're going to use historical prices. For the time period, we're going to try to match the same data that we get for the interest rate, for the T-bill rate, so that the days will line up. Um, one thing that um, we need to also be mindful is that these are prices are not returned. The T-bill uh, return data, so we need one extra period of data for prices so that we can compute the monthly return. So since the start day for um, so this is a the, the format is month, date, year. So since the starting period for the interest rate is January of 2015, we actually need December. We're going to put December um, 2 for 2014. And then the last period is also December. Again, we're going to use 2 um, to 2019. So we apply our filter. Um, again, once we scroll down to make sure that we are picking up the date that we want. So the last one is December 2019. And the first one is... December 2015, so that we will get uh, December 2014, so we will get January 2015. Okay, once we have the date that we want, uh, all you have to do is select download. Notice that it's also um, downloaded as a CSV file, so we've done that before. Um, all we need to do is just open it in Excel. So anytime you see a pound sign, that means the column width is too narrow. We can adjust that. And here's the volume. So these are the number of shares traded. This is uh, the price that we're going to use to compute return is the adjusted close. So we can uh, focus on this one. So to compute the return, uh, we need the ending price divided by the beginning price minus one. So we can pick up the equal sign and pick up the date and the return Mr. said is the ending price so ending price will be so we won't have price for 2015 
December 2015 because we need the ending price. So the ending price is the more recent price divided by the beginning price minus one. So that's the return for the month of January 2015. And we can copy this. And so now we have computed the return for Oracle stock from January 2015 all the way to December 2019. So we have um, the return that on the days that matches our um, risk free rate. Next, we're going to take a look at how to get pricing data for the stock index and how to compute return for the stock index. As I emphasized, there are many different data sources. Uh, Finance Yahoo is just one of them. So this is, you need to specify the symbol that you're looking for. And we know that we want the S&P 500 index, which is the correct sign, and then GSPC. So that's the S&P 500 index. Uh, one difference between um, the stock data and the TBU data is that the TBU data is already return data. Um, the stock data, so first let's go to the historical data. Um, it is a price data, so we have to convert the price data into return data. We'll have to do that on our own. So we have to change that to monthly. And then again, we can uh, specify the default date, but we want to match what we have used. So we remember that we started with January 20, 20, um, 2015, but we need one more month of price data in order for us to compute the um, return data. So we're going to start with 20. 14 December 20 December 1st and we're going to end in um also December of 2019 okay and we'll apply this um unfortunately yahoo um uh, does not provide a download button for um, the S&P 500 index. So to do that, we actually have to use a function in Excel that allow us to download data directly from the from the web. So open Excel, open a um, you can create a new file in Excel just so that you don't mess up anything else that you have done. Uh, what you want is select data, and then you have an option to uh, import data from a web page. So you have to use, a, you have to provide the web address, the URL, and we can copy that from what we have specified. So let's go back to um, the browser. So remember, this is the one that we have specified. It is, um, we should double check, is from November. Actually, we need to make sure that the second one is in December. So we'll put December 2nd. Okay, so that's correct. So November 30th, 2014 to December 1st, 2019. So once again, we want to change that to second. So we have December. through December of 2019. And the reason we have to do that is because of trading days. So always check to make sure that you have what you're looking for before you start downloading the data. Okay, and now we're gonna copy the URL. So we just have to do copy. And then we can go back to Excel. You remember in Excel, we, we choose under data from the web. And now we have the URL, so we can paste it. And 
and you connect to the data source. So let's take a look here first. So we know that, yes, we are looking at what we would like to see. So we click on table. We can go back to the table view. And we like what we see, so we will select load. And it will import the data um, into Excel. Next, we're going to have to convert um, the return, uh, the price data into return data. Uh, so remember that the return data, so this is the SP500 return. The return data is equal to the ending price. So this is the adjusted close price divided by the beginning price, which is the adjusted close, um, and then minus 1. So that's the return for um, the month of 2019, December 2019. And once again, we don't have a return for the last month. So the calculation is really easy. So here are the monthly return on the S&P 500 index. Um, once again, is the five years worth of data. Now, in addition to downloading the data in this way, um, we can also use a simple copy and paste um, that may not be as reliable, but it will also work if you um, are having trouble with the web, um, uh, the using the um, in, uh, insert web query. So to do the copy and paste, you know, we still have the same thing that we had um, before. Um, and we simply highlight all the information we need. It's, a, it's important to not include the extra text. And then we just right click and select copy. Um, and then paste. So if it works, uh, it's a lot easier than using the web query. But learning how to use the web query also gives you um, an, an, another tools. And we can compute the return the same way. So we're going to pick up the date. And again, we're going to use the adjusted code close as the pricing. Um, And we take the ending price divided by the beginning price and subtract it by one. So this is the S&P 500 return. And we copy it once again through the time. So we have from January 2015 all the way to December 2019. Uh, you can change the format of the date so it's easier for you to see. So you can choose more format to select date. Um, Now we're going to start the difficult task of combining all these dates together. So remember, we have downloaded the um, treasury T-bill rate, the stock return, the stock prices, and convert that to return, and also the S&P 500 index and convert that to return. Now we have to put it to, into one worksheet. I'm going to create a blank worksheet so that um, we can show you how to co uh, copy everything over. So I open up a new worksheet and then I call back. This is the worksheet that contains the um, T-bill rate. So I'm going to copy all of this. Um, and one thing that's important to remember is that this is already in percentages. So this is the T-bill rate in percent. So I need to convert this into um, decimals. So I'm actually I'm going to put 
the word T bill in here so that is easier to remember. So to convert this into decimal, I have to divide this by 100. So once again, you have copied the um, form, you can copy the formula throughout. Now, once you have cre computed this, this is very different from um, a model where you want to keep all your um, formulas. In fact, here, you don't want to keep the formulas. You want to convert this into a value. To do that, um, to select the entire column, you can hold down the Shift key and then press the down arrow key. Um, or you can select all the way to the bottom. You hold down the shift key and then hold down the control key and then press down arrow. So we can copy this and then we want to paste, paste this and we want to paste it as values only. So this is a special way. Once you select that, you'll notice that the formula is now gone and these are just the decimals that you have computed. So now I'm going to label this as my T bill return. So that's a, I know that that's a return data. Uh, I no longer need the original, so I'm going to delete that. Next, I'm going to go open up the worksheet that we have created, the Oracle stock return. Remember, this is my Oracle stock return. I'm going to move the label down one row so that is right next to what I need it. So I'm going to copy this. So select and copy both columns. And now I'm going to switch back to the workbook that I was working with. This is the workbook that we created the TBU return. I'm going to select the first row here and I'm going to paste what we have copy. Once again, I'm going to paste the just the numbers, just the values. So you can select just the value or the value and formatting. I'm just going to put the value he here. One thing that's very important is to check to make sure that we are lining up the dates correctly. So we check to make sure that the dates are lined up correctly. And notice that even though I use value, I paste it as value, I get rid of the formula, it is carried out to many decimal places. And that's exactly what we want. Once we check that the dates are correct, we can get rid of these two columns. And I'm going to save this. So always save your work and save it often. Um, so we're computing market risk. Okay. Um, okay. The next worksheet we're gonna work, we're gonna look at is the S and P 500 index. The first thing we notice is that the uh, so let's do the same thing. We're gonna copy this and we're gonna paste again as values. One thing we notice is that the days are not matching up. This is 2015, this is 2019. In fact, um, this is in, uh, one of this is in ascending chronological order and one of this is in descending chronological order. Fortunately, there is an Excel um, function command that allow us to make that, to do that quite easily. To do that, we're gonna go to data and we're going to use the sort function in data. It automatically select this for us. Uh, if you didn't, you can pre-select this. Um, so before you start, make sure that your cursor is on the date of the two columns that you want to sort. So the box is check. My data has headers. So that means um, the first one is called date and the second one is an S&P 500 return. And if you click on column, you'll see that those two were included. So I'll select date 
and I want the oldest to newest. So I want 2015 to come before 2019. Select OK. And you'll see that Excel has sorted this for you. And now you can match the dates. And indeed, the dates are matched. And now we can get rid of the dates because they are all matching. And we can save it again. So now we have the TBU return, the stock return, and the S&P 500 return. Before we can um, compute the um, market risk, we have one more calculation to do. And that is we need to compute the excess return for both the stock and the index. So we need the Oracle excess return. Um, and to compute the excess return, all we have to do is take the monthly return minus the TBU return. And we can change the format so that it's easier to read. So we can make that four decimal places. Uh, the same thing for the S&P 500. We, can, we need to compute the excess return. And that's also equal to the S&P return minus the TBU rate. And now we can copy these two columns of excess return for the entire period. To estimate the market risk, meaning the beta for Oracle, we'll need to run a regression in Excel. So the S&P 500 return is going to be our X variable. And the Oracle return is going to be, or the stock return is going to be our y variable so to do that we go to data and under data analysis now if you do not have data analysis in store you may see a um, a prompt for you to install this um this add-in package um but if you do then it's all set to go so you can select regression. So it's an input Y range. So remember, this is Oracle is our Y range. And I will include the label because and when you do that, make sure you check the label. And the X range, again, is the S&P 500 exact return. And we want the output to be in a new work. Look, you can, so here you can put regression output. And we'll just keep all the others default. Once you press OK, it generates a regression output in Excel. Um, these are not formatted, so you'll, again, make it easier if you change the number of decimal places. And the coefficient, this is your beta. So Oracle has a beta of 1.0914. Since the market, stock market as a whole, has a beta of 1, what this means is compared to the S&P 500 index, Oracle has a slightly higher risk. So when the stock market goes up, we can expect Oracle stock to go up slightly more than the market. And when the market goes down, we, or the S&P 500 index in this case, we can expect Oracle to go slightly further down, meaning worse than uh, the S&P 500 index. Uh, you want to take a look at how reliable this estimate is. And we do typically look to that uh, with the p-value. It has a p-value of almost zero, or very, very small. You can see it here. Uh, so that means this estimate is quite reliable. Um, the intercept, on the other hand, has a p-value of 0.6, which is very high. 
typically the cutoff for the p-value is 0.055% or 0.011%. So what that means is the intercept is indistinguishable from zero. Uh, how well does the uh, S&P 500 return explain the changes in the Oracle stock? We look at the R square is 0.52, uh, which means um, more about 50 or more than 50 percent, 52.64 percent of the variation in the stock return on Oracle can be explained by variation from the stock market. So there are other things going on that affects the return on Oracle besides the S&P 500 index. Um, and, and that is, um, to further examine that um, is beyond the scope of this class. But for the purpose of estimating the systematic risk, um, the, this model seems to have done a reasonable job. And if our systematic risk is defined as uh, the capital asset pricing model, uh, Oracle is almost the same, just slightly higher risk than the market as a whole. We will end the video for this chapter here. I'll see you again soon in the next chapter.